Hey guys, my name is Jacob. I'm a second year medical student at St. George's University. I just wanted to do a quick video for any students that may be uh, getting ready to start term one at SGU and just uh, talk about it and give a little bit of an overview um, and uh, talk about some of the things that help me. So term one is named Basic Principles of Medicine One and SGU is systems based, which means they divide up their curriculum and modules that are based on systems. So for example, that might be cardiology, renal, or pulmonology, um, it just depends. So in term one, you're gonna have five modules. The first two are FTM1 and FTM2. FTM stands for Foundations to Medicine, and what you're gonna be looking at in those two modules is just going to be your basic genetics, cell biology, um, the cell cycle, things like that. And basically the way that your curriculum is broken up into is you're usually going to have two lectures per day and then you're also going to have what are called DLAs which are directed learning activities. You're going to have multiple of those throughout the week depending on which module. I remember specifically that for FTM1, there are a lot of directed learning activities. There's a lot of DLAs throughout that one, but I would encourage you just to stick with it um, because they get lighter and, um, and don't skip over them either. Make sure that you're um, really diving into those and make sure that you study those um, you know, as good as a, as a lecture. So The next module you'll go into after FTM1 and 2 is MSK which is going to be your musculoskeletal system and you're going to learn all the bones and all the muscles. You have uh, correlating anatomy labs as well which will be really helpful to get hands-on experience. Um, one thing I would note with MSK is that one of your textbooks, the Grace um, Anatomy Review, is going to be really great for MSK. Um, it's going to have a lot of practice questions. You'll definitely want to hit those probably at least two to three times. Uh, and to be honest, the Grace is probably the only textbook that I used in Term 1. So I would um, just encourage you to use that and make sure to hit those practice questions and uh, you should be good. So as you finish up term one, your last two modules are gonna be CPR1 and CPR2. So CPR1 mainly looks at cardiology and pulmonology, and then CPR2 is gonna be more of your renal, um, renal anatomy and how, how the kidneys work. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed CPR1 and 2. I think it felt more like um, medical school versus just you know undergraduate classes and you start to kind of feel like a doctor where you're learning diseases you're learning um, congenital malformations so I, I really enjoyed those two as far as the length of all the modules I, I think it's pretty standard in term one you have about uh, three weeks for each one maybe four for MSK depending on how the schedule lines up for that semester. In terms two and four, you start to have a little bit of variation in the modules, but it's pretty standard in um, term one. As far as testing and exams go, for term one, you're gonna have five exams. You're gonna have one for each module, and they are cumulative, so they do build up on each other. Um, so I would just, I would, what I would recommend for that would be just continuing to do Anki. Um, if you do those flashcards and just kind of like let them build up as you go through the semester and you keep reviewing them, you shouldn't have any problem with the cumulative material that, that goes on, especially in the later test. So you have the five modular exams, which are worth about around 120 to 130 points apiece. And then you're going to have your lab exam, which is worth about 30 points. And then you're going to have your OSEX and your OSEX is your online clinical examination um, or if you're in person it's called an OSCE and that's usually worth about 40 points and that's just going to be a uh, clinical examination where they're testing your physical exam uh, skills and things like that and then finally you're going to have your participation points which are going to be worth around 60 to 65 points and um, there's no reason why you can't get 100% of those points because 
the what's included in those points are your um, IMCQs, which are um, your interactive multiple choice question sessions. And what those consist of are just uh, multiple choice questions where you can work together with other students and answer the questions. Um, and you just have to get over 50% of those correct per session to receive those points. And then also you'll have your weekly quizzes that are factored into that grade, which are just going to be maybe 20 to 30 questions um, that are re a review from the week. And then the last thing that's factored in your participation is just going to be your lecture and then your small groups. Um, in term one, you have about one to two small groups that are just going to consist of discussing a lot of the material that you're learning in lectures. Um, and you're probably going to have to spend time um, preparing slides for most of those so you may be um, asked to present a histology slide on a certain um, cell or something like that but um, and the the rule for all of these participation points is going to be 80 percent so as long as you have 80 percent or more of the uh, lectures small groups um, all of those things then you will get your full points so a couple points of advice as I wrap up here. The first thing I would say is, again, I would definitely recommend that you use Anki or some type of repetitive memorization skill. Um, this is gonna be really important, especially as concepts build over time as you go into term two and term three and things like that. The second thing I would say is um, I would stick to a schedule. Um, something that's been really handy for me is a planner. So I, I take notes in here about what I'm wanting to get done and I kind of use it to challenge myself as far as, uh, as what task I want to get done. And kind of overlapping with that, I would also recommend that you do as many passes as possible of the lectures and the DLAs. My goal when I'm going through a certain module to get at, at the end of a module as I take a test is I usually want to have at least five to six passes of that information when I take the exam and it's worked out really well for me um, personally. The third thing I would say is I would hit practice questions. This is something that um, a lot of medical students as they're coming in they, may, they might not realize but you cannot just look at the information and expect to do well on a test. You really need to practice using that information that you've studied and practice questions are the best way to do that. Um, especially the ones that SGU gives you, they're going to be written exactly like the test questions on the exam. And so I would definitely recommend doing those um, maybe even two to three passes um, if you're, if, especially if, if you're having trouble with those. And then the last thing I would say is just make sure that you're taking a break every once in a while. Even if it's short, even if it's just, you know, going for a walk or, you know, playing with your dog or, or whatever it is, I would just make sure to have that time where you can kind of decompress. It is very important to stick to a schedule and make sure that you're being consistent and diligent and doing your post reads and your pre reads. And you know, if you do boards and beyond videos, or if you do pixarize videos, or kind of whatever your study schedule looks like, you make you want to make sure that you're doing that consistently. But you also need to be able to take breaks and have outlets where you can kind of de-stress and things like that. So I hope that this video was helpful. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Um, we'd also appreciate it if you would subscribe and like the video down below. Um, we're going to try to put out some more content um, for um, students in terms one through four. Um, I'm getting ready to start term five myself so uh, I'd like to be able to put out some content to be able to help uh, SU medical students that are just starting out. Uh, but thanks for taking time to watch this video.